welcome back to Get Your Sax Together. I'm pro saxophonist Jamie Anderson. Thanks for watching. This week I'm going to do another sax legend. It's the seventh in the series and it is a true sax legend of epic proportions. It's the one and only Lester Prez Young. Whether you're a complete beginner on sax, if you're an intermediate player, or even if you're a pro, one of the best ways to become a better saxophonist is to study the greats who've come before us, like the ones pictured on my sax hall of fame behind me. Now, if you wanna see the rest of the videos in this series, go to the card linked up there, and that will take you straight to the playlist with all the greats. This is the seventh one in the series now. It can be a little bit overwhelming at times, if somebody recommends to you to go and check out a player and you don't know where to start. So that's what this series is all about. You're gonna learn about the life and times. You're gonna learn a fantastic lick. You're gonna see the person in action. And probably more importantly than anything else, I'm gonna give you only five tunes that you can go straight to wherever you listen to music to get a great impression of that player. So this week we have a true innovator, one of the foundational influences on all sax players ever since, and that is Lester Young. So before we check out him in action and learn one of his licks, let's learn a little bit more about the man behind the pork pie hat. Born in 1909, hip, introverted tenor saxophonist Lester Young pioneered a sophisticated, modern, airy style that defined not just an era, but a whole branch on the evolutionary tree of jazz. Always fleet and floating, but with an infectious underlying driving swing and earthy blues sensibility, Young's genre-defining tenor work provided a contrast to the more muscular approach of the other predominant tenor man of the day, Coleman Hawkins. These two would be a powerful influence on every subsequent saxophonist, with Lester Young broadly pioneering the lighter West Coast sound and Hawkins the more forceful East Coast sound. Born Lester Willis Young in Mississippi of a musical family, Lester Young joined the family touring band at just 10 years old, already competent on trumpet, violin and drums. Later switching to tenor sax and eventually leaving home for good in 1932 to join Walter Page's territory dance band The Blue Devils. From 1933 to 1940, Young, or Prez as his inseparable kindred spirit Billy Holiday dubbed him, played with the Count Basie Orchestra, helping forge the unique sound of that famous unit, finally returning in 1943 for another 10 months after a period of casual playing and recording that included sessions with Nat King Cole. Prez's second tenure with Basie was truncated by his draft into the regular army, where, unlike many white musicians at the time who found spots in big bands, he wasn't allowed to play his sax at all. While serving, he was court-martialed for possession of alcohol and marijuana and endured an awful year in detention barracks before his dishonourable discharge in 1945. Mercifully, Prez's post-war years proved more fruitful, both financially and artistically, and notably, during this period, he was involved with Norman Grant's Jazz at the Philharmonic, including a memorable Carnegie Hall concert in 1949 with Charlie Parker. His breathtaking solo on Lester Leaps In from that concert is full of surprises and punctuated with the distinctive rhythmic double fingerings that he was famous for. Although he still recorded many memorable and inspired cuts, especially in 1956, Prez's lifestyle gradually went into decline through the 1950s, with his reliance on alcohol creating an increasingly shambolic and chaotic existence. An inspiring beacon of light in this period are his legendary performances on the Sound of Jazz CBS TV special with Billie Holiday in 1957. A jazz tenor sax summit featuring amongst others Coleman Hawkins and Ben Webster. His single chorus on the blues fine and mellow is at once angularly economic and heart-wrenchingly emotional. After a shortened European tour in 1959, Lester Young died in New York in March 1959 at the age of 49. His lifelong buddy, Billy Holiday, died just four months later. In a poignant contrast to fellow tenor man Sonny Rollins, who's still alive as I record this, Lester Young was the first person to die from Art Kane's historic Great Day in Harlem photo of 1958. I call this series Sax Legends, and there could scarcely be more of a sax legend than Lester Young a troubled innovator, a unique stylist, and a master of standards, ballads, blues, and up-tempo alike, Prez truly embodies the history of the saxophone. 
now you know a bit more about the man behind the horn, let's see Lester Young in action. There's two clips. One is from a TV show called Jam in the Blues from 1944. The tune is On the Sunny Side of the Street. And the second clip is from the TV special I mentioned in the biog, The Sound of Jazz. The tune is called Fine and Mellow. And it is a beautifully emotional blues chorus from Lester Young. Hope you enjoy this. <laughs> So we've learned a little bit about Lester Young's life. We've seen him in action. Now let's take it on. Let's learn to play like Lester Young. The lick I've chosen to teach you is from the legendary 1938 Count Basie recording of Jumping at the Woodside. His solo starts about two minutes in. It's the bridge of a rhythm changes in constant B flat. Now, if you go down into the description, click the link, you will get a free PDF, which has got this written out. Here it is. If you go down there, you can get your PDF and you can print it off and follow along with all the phrases marked in as we learn this incredible eight bars of Lester Young. This is so awesome. Before I teach you the phrase, let's have a little listen to press playing it. Here we go. <laughs> So I'll break it down into chunks for you, two bar chunks. Here is the first chunk played nice and slowly. Now here is the second segment of the phrase. Here is phrase three. Now I'm pretty sure on the D, he uses a side key D, not the long D, because of the way it bends up to the D. So what you do is to play uh, alternative fingering from middle D, you just play like a high D, a high palm key D, but without the octave key, and that will give you a D. And that is how he manages to scoop up to the D in this third phrase. <laughs> And finally, here is the last segment of the phrase. He's got this absolutely awesome augmented figure in this one, check it out. Now, putting together all those chunks, we get the eight bar phrase, and it sounds like this. How do you whittle down Lester Young's fabulous career into five tunes? Well, you can't, but I've just had to go for five, which I think are super important and will really get you started on your listening journey. Number one, Lester Leaps In, recorded live from Jazz at the Philharmonic from the Carnegie Hall in New York in 1949, a concert that featured the one and only Charlie Parker. This is Lester Young at his most inventive. Hope you enjoy this one. Go and check it out. Number two, Jumping at the Woodside, 
the Count Basie recording of 1938. This is the recording that we've just learnt the lick from. He takes one chorus and it is classic Lester Young. This is all you need to know about B-flat rhythm changes. Number three, one o'clock jump, recorded live with the Count Basie Orchestra at the Newport Jazz Festival in 1957. This is one of the occasions where Lester Young went back to sit in with his old band and it created this absolutely fantastic concert and this fantastic tune. Number four is Stardust. We've got to have a Lester Young ballad in this selection because his ballad playing is just so beautiful. This is from the album he did with the Oscar Peterson Trio, recorded in 1954. This is just sublime. Number five, I Want To Be Happy, recorded with the Lester Young Trio featuring Buddy Rich. Sometimes it's called the Buddy Rich Trio on certain releases of it. And the trio is completed with Nat King Cole on piano. This is full of energy and typical of Lester Young's creativity. So go and check out I Want To Be Happy. So that's it for this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about Lester Young, a player I'm really passionate about and a big influence on me. I absolutely love his playing. Please do go and check out the rest of my Sax Legend series. And if you're enjoying the content on the channel, please do subscribe. Click the bell to be notified when I upload new material. Leave me a comment. Go and check out my Instagram feed. And of course, don't forget, go down into the description, click the link and you will get your free PDF for this video, which has got the lick for tenor and alto, and it's got the five Fab Five tunes with all the albums, dates, years, everything, so you can find them quite easily. That's a wonderful resource to go and pick up. There'll be more Fab Sax action coming to you next Sunday. Remember, I sax up every one of your Sundays at 7 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, and uh, there'll be more sax stuff next Sunday. As always, I look forward to seeing you then. See you later, bye.